now what I'm going to do is to discuss an advanced topic. Once again, this is not covered in the handout, in the hands-on exercise, but I just want to talk about it anyway. So here what I want to talk about is about asymmetric costs, right? So right now we are looking at errors that are created and sort of assuming that both types of errors are the same. The implications of both kinds of errors are the same. What are the errors we can make? Well, one kind of error we can make is to predict that it's not going to rain tomorrow when it actually rains. And the other kind of error we could make is to predict that it is going to rain tomorrow when it actually doesn't rain. Okay. Now, depending upon the context, the costs of these two kinds of errors may not be the same. Now, let's say that uh, you're going to wear a fancy dress and you're going to go out on the following day. So you want to know if it's going to rain. In this case, suppose the system says it's not going to rain and it actually rains. Then you're going to ruin an expensive dress. That's a problem. Now suppose on the other hand, the system says it is going to rain, but it actually doesn't rain. But because the system said it's going to rain, you carried an umbrella. So the cost you incurred was just carrying an umbrella, which may not be a big deal. You're just throwing in an umbrella in the bag. You're anyway taking a bag with all kinds of other things. An extra 250 grams may not be a big deal to carry a small lightweight umbrella, right? So the error of not predicting rain correctly, that is not predicting rain when it's actually going to rain, may be more costly, okay? So we want to let Rattle know about this so that Rattle then makes our, uh, tunes the decision tree accordingly, right? Now, suppose we tell it that it's a far more, uh, it's a far bigger mistake to not predict rain when it actually rains, right? Then what it's going to do is Rattle is going to be more prone to predicting rain, that is making a mistake of predicting no rain days as actually rain days. Now, from the point of view of the tree, what you'll see is that uh, when it predicts rain, it'll have many more errors, right? That is, it'll, it'll err on the side of predicting rain. Let's take a look at how to actually spell. In order to do this, you specify what is called as a loss matrix. Now, uh, I don't talk about this in our hands-on activity. If you're interested, uh, we'll, you know, you can email me and we can, I will probably create a separate discussion of this topic itself. But here I'm just going to show you that let's say that it's 10 times more expensive to make the error of not predicting rain when it's actually going to rain than the other way. So in this case, the loss matrix, and I'll, I won't go into the details here, we specify it as 0, 10, 1, 0, right? That is, we are saying it's 10 times more costly to make this kind of a mistake than the other kind of a mistake. Okay, so I've made that setting. I changed nothing else. Now I execute and the model is a little bit different. So what we're going to do is I'm moving this away here and we're going to look at the new tree that has been generated by Rattle. Let's draw the new tree. So it gave us a new tree. Now notice the propensity to predict yes. Okay, so it says it's going to rain on this node, which is a leaf node, even though only 48% of those cases are actually days in which it rained. So the days in which it rained was not even a majority. And yet, Rattle's prediction for that node is rain. Similarly, if you look at this leaf node here, it says 41% of the cases are cases of rain. So the majority is no rain and yet it's predicting rain because of the cost involved. The cost tilts the decision in this favor. Whereas if you look at all the no's, it's all 100%. Right? It's, it's predicting a no only when there's a 100% chance that it's a no. That means there are no cases with a yes. So then obviously it's going to predict uh, a no. Whereas if the cost is 10 times, then the number of no's would have to outweigh the number of yeses by a factor of 10 for it to predict this. Okay, so that's the impact of uh, 
of asymmetric costs. Now for this new decision tree, let's look at the error matrix. Okay, so I'm going to go into evaluate and let's look at the error on the testing partition because that's what we really should look at. Okay, so notice that the error has gone up to now 25%. Earlier it was 20% but the error rate has now increased to 25%. Right, you may say why the, it looks like the error rate should have gone up by much more because it was predicting more of the days as yeses. Right, but still there were not too many yeses to begin with. So a slight increase in the number of yeses was not a big deal. Okay, so that is why the error rate itself hasn't gone up too much, but it has gone up. On the validation data, once again, let's see what the error rate was. It was a lot, it was 41%. On the test data, somehow the it got, it lucked out and the error rate was, was not very much. Okay, so that's the impact of asymmetric costs in our decision trees. Now in reality, in practice, when you're doing this, I would assume that you would be in situations where asymmetric costs actually apply. And therefore, uh, this might be something that you might want to probe a little deeper later on. And if you're interested, let me know and I'll, I'll also produce uh, some more material on this.